أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يشري نفسه بالتغاء مرضات الله والله رؤوف بالعباد There are two features within a human being if you check the emotions of a human being, you see there are always two opposing factors, two opposing instincts instinct within a human being. Fear versus courage, for example. Anger versus satisfaction. One distinct feature or two distinct features within a human being are selfishness and self-sacrifice. Those two are always opposing each other. And both are needed for the continuation of a human being life. Selfishness or egotism, as we call it, it is farther and wider than self-love. Self-love is an instinct within a human being that ensures his survival. If a human being does not love himself, then there is no motive for him to continue his life. Simply, he does not work, does not achieve anything, and eventually vanishes, and does not protect himself, does not get angry if it gets insulted, does not defend himself if somebody attacks him. So self-love is a necessity for any human being that it should be within him. Now, egotism is farther than that, than that, and in extreme cases, it becomes a trait where the human being sees himself as the center of the universe, self-centered person, cannot see the world unless it's through his own interest and his own desires. His desires, his wishes, his interests becomes the ultimate things and there is no regard for other people's wishes and desires and needs. To this kind of person we call it an egotist, a person who has ego, an arrogant person. Just the opposite of that we have self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice is a trait, again, within a human being, to a certain extent, that puts the interest of others before his own interest. It promotes the chances of survival for others at the expense of himself. Now, those two needed to be balanced. Any of them dominates, the other one, you will see it will have a negative effect on the human being. If someone who is completely self-sacrificed, whatever he gains, he give it to others. Whatever position he has, he surrender it to others. Then there is no point for him to survive. Therefore, you need to have a balance between the two. Not that egoist who always look at himself, look at the interest of himself. As long as his stomach is full, he cares less for the others. As long as his pocket is full of money and a plenty of credit cards and good bank accounts and nice mansion, beautiful wife, fancy car, then that would be a heaven for him. Now what is happening to his neighbor is irrelevant to him. He does not care. I am sure that every one of us have met such kind of people that only see the universe through their own 
interest. Someone who sells coffins, you know coffins, those people who die? The other day, called my brother and told him, say it, the business is slow. Can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it, you know, a little bit easier for us? We have, you know, bills to pay. So he said, what should I say? Some people to die? He said, of course. I mean, how can I sell my profit? So sometimes people see the interest of themselves at the expense of others. And that is called egotism. Now, there are three distinct views for this trait. The first one, which is more dialectic or a Western ideology, it is called ethical egotism. What does ethic, ethical egotism mean? It means that individuals always should, should seek their own interest, their own profit. But that is not necessarily meaning to hurt others. We do our profits, we gain, and we succeed without hurting others. But if there is a conflict between the two, meaning my interest and your interest, then my interest will take priority. Then I have to go with my own interest. This is the philosophy that Western countries is based on that. That's why it's called capitalism. What is capitalism? You gain money. You grow the money, but how many people suffer? It tells you, I'm, I'm not here to, suffer, to make other people suffer. But my point is that I should gain. Now, if there is a conflict between the two, of course, my interest takes a precedence over other people's profits and other people's needs. So this is one point. Just opposing to that is the Marxist view. Of course, the proponent of the Western ideology for this is called Thomas Hobbes. It's very well known, scholar and philosopher. Opposing to that are the Marxists. The Marxists tell you the interest of society is number one. Individuals are obligated to serve others, to provide for others. Always a human interest is running secondary to the interest of society. The society always takes a precedence over a human's interest. This is how it is. This is how they run the show. And they argue that always whenever you see trouble, whenever you see fighting, war and battle, you see it has started from the interest of a single guy. One person covets others, has envy for other people of property and wealth, therefore attacks them, raid them, confiscate their property for the sake of himself. Had he put the interest of society before him and have thought of the interest of others that bring misery to them, kill his soldiers and his nation, destroy his own nations, he wouldn't do it. And we know plenty of those individuals in the near history and far history. We can name many who have jeopardized the safety of their society for the interests of their own. Therefore, they say that the best thing is the society's interest. Keep the society's interest, number one. What does Islam say? I will tell you after your salawat. <laughs> Islam is basically a utilitarian entity. Tells you that a human being should work hard and they should succeed. However, not at the expense of others. You do well, but always keep in mind the necessity, the needs of others. Always see yourself. You are advancing. You are gaining. Are other people suffering or not? Always ask yourself this question. 